Sometimes you are forced to work on the AC system of your vehicle, or sometimes you have to remove a line or a condenser that may get in the way of a complicated repair. Whatever the case, if your air conditioning system has been open and exposed to the elements in any way, you will have to draw a vacuum to recharge that AC system. And uh, this isn't just as simple as putting a can on the system and using that quick recharge tool when your AC system is low on Freon. No, if your AC system has been completely emptied of Freon, it can be very expensive for you to take your car into the shop. I'm gonna show you guys how to find and buy the right tools and use them to do it cheaper on your vehicle yourself. I'm working on my 2009 Nissan Murano 3.5 liter V6, but this process should hold true on most vehicles. Before you begin your AC system recharge on your vehicle, you need to identify what type of refrigerant you are going to be using. Most vehicles like my Murano have a sticker here on the hood, and I don't know why the camera won't focus on it, but it says HFC 134A, also known as R134A. Now, most vehicles will use R134A. If your vehicle is an R12 vehicle, um, you're probably gonna have to convert it over to R134A, and you need to do more research on how to do that because you cannot put R134A in an R12 system. Uh, it simply will not work. And uh, it, uh, R R12 is very bad for the environment, so don't just open that up. You may have to take that vehicle into shop. But if your vehicle is R134A, you'll also notice that it tells you what type of oil to be using. Here it's Nissan UV Luminous Oil Type S. That, what, that is what gives your AC system that green color when there's a leak or when something opens so that you can see it. Now, you'll also need to identify the high and the low side ports on your air conditioning system. These are two different sizes. The low side's usually smaller than the high side and they'll have a cap on them. You'll want to remove these caps. Now you will need to go out and buy AC tools. I got this manifold gauge set and air conditioning vacuum pump from Amazon for about 120 bucks. Comes in a nice case, super nice kit. And if you have a lot of vehicles or other vehicles that you need to perform this AC repair on, I highly recommend buying these tools on Amazon so that you can have them and keep them nice and use them forever. If you were to take just this car alone into a shop or the dealership to have the AC system recharged, you would be around $200 in fees. This AC manifold gauge set and vacuum pump together costs 120 bucks, and then all of the refrigerant combined that I'm putting into this car and oil is less than $20. So, if you have more than one vehicle to do, or if you wanna save a little bit of money, learn how to do it, and then keep these for later, um, this is the cheaper option. Now, if you don't want to spend the money on the tools, and you don't want to spend the money on the shop fee, you can rent both the manifold gauge set and a vacuum pump from O'Reilly's or AutoZone through their loaner tool programs, which I've also done in the past and highly recommend. All right, so we're gonna start by hanging our manifold gauge set up here on the hood. This, for some reason, keeps pulling my hood down, so uh, I'm not gonna leave it up here for the duration of the repair. But you'll want to connect the low side, which is in blue, to the low side port service port on your AC system. Make sure it's connected good here. You might have to pull up on this, push that down. Once you have this connected, verify that it is closed by turning it counterclockwise on the service port. You'll also want to verify that it is closed on your manifold gauge set by turning it clockwise. Now we will do the same thing to the high pressure side service port. Go ahead and connect up our high pressure service hose, verify that it's on there, and then we'll also verify that it is closed by turning it counterclockwise. Your port should also be closed here on the gauge by turning it clockwise. You'll now notice this yellow service line will run from the center of the gauge set to the vacuum pump. With everything in this current position, you will now open the low side service port, open the high side service port, and then you will turn on the vacuum pump. 
With the vacuum pump turned on, you will then open your gauges and you should see a vacuum beginning to pull. Both those gauges will dip down below zero. We will now let our vacuum pump run for 30 to 45 minutes to draw a complete vacuum or to get all of the air out of the AC system. You may notice a little bit of steam coming out of the exhaust port on your vacuum pump. This is completely normal, so don't worry that you're burning this pump up or anything. Um, if you are worried about that, check your oil level here. It should be in between the max and the min. And I don't know if you can see that steam coming out or not, but that's just condensation that's built up from the AC system or in the vacuum pump and it's coming out of the exhaust port there. So don't be too worried if you see some steam, it's not smoke or anything coming out of the pump. All right, 30 minutes have passed and we can see that the gauges here have pulled a vacuum and that the pump has pulled a vacuum. So our next step here is going to be to shut off both the low and the high side gauges here. You'll hear the vacuum kind of change note. And then you'll want to come over here and you'll want to shut the vacuum pump off. Now with the vacuum pump off, these gauges closed and those service ports still open. We're going to let this sit for another 30 minutes and we will come back out to verify that the system has held the vacuum. If these needles come back up towards zero, then we know that there is a leak somewhere in the system. We're gonna do this step for 30 minutes so that we verify that there are no leaks. That way we don't waste any expensive Freon, plus we don't want that going out into the environment. So I'm gonna let this sit for another 30 minutes. We'll come back out, we'll verify that it has held a vacuum, and uh, then we'll refill the system. All right, and we're back. After waiting for over 45 minutes, we see that both of our gauges are still reading what it did 45 minutes ago, which is excellent news for the Murano's AC system. It's holding a chart. So now we are going to refill the system with R134A, and I have my can of Freon here with R134A. I screwed this fitting onto the top of it with it all the way up because with it down it punctures the line and uh, then Freon comes out so don't screw that on unless it's down. I'm going to go ahead and remove the yellow line here from the AC vacuum pump and I'm going to attach it to this line. We'll then open the Freon can with both of these valves still closed. We'll then bleed this line using this screw here of any air that's in the line until Freon starts to come out here, or we can see it here. Then we'll shut this off, and then we'll be ready for the next step. All right, so I have Freon connected here. I'm gonna open up this can just a little bit so that it's letting it flow. I bled the line here using this bleeder cap. So we have Freon coming out, no air in the system. You do not want air in the system, very bad thing. The next step here is to start the car and turn on the air conditioning. Make sure that your manifold gauge lines are out of the road before you do this. You don't want them caught up in your fan or something. That'll ruin your day. So we are gonna turn on, come on. We're gonna turn on our AC here to the max or the lowest setting. And then with the AC turned on in the car, we're gonna open the low pressure side gauge. You'll see that it immediately begins sucking in Freon. Do not open the high side gauge, but do leave the high side open down there so that you can see pressure building up in that gauge as the pressure builds. Now. Every system is different as to the amount of Freon that it will take and that it will handle. So you'll probably have to monitor these bottles here. You may have to shake them a little bit as you do this. Um, that way you get you know, the right amount of Freon in the system that you need to. And when that runs out, you can go ahead, shut this off and put a new can on uh, and bleed the yellow line as well before you start to fill the system back up. But we're gonna go ahead and do this until we pressure up around, you know, we're already pretty close here on the low side, around 40. 
and this we want to see probably up in the 200s now your car will tell you or may tell you on a sticker as well if that's normal but as your system fills up with freon you'll notice that your ac compressor stays kicked on right now it might kick on and off and you may have to jump it trick it to stay on and then your car will actually start to get colder on the inside as well okay as we're waiting for the system to pressure up here i do want to mention that you do not want to recharge your system without oil in it now on the sticker on your cars it's going to tell you what type of oil you need to use for this it's nissan type s but uh, I'm just using an oil charge can from Walmart. It should be pretty compatible with everything. I think it's PAG Oil 46, which uh, I looked on a compatibility chart and it's pretty close to the same thing. So um, this only has two ounces in it. I wouldn't recommend buying the cans. It's expensive this way, but I need AC and I can't wait for an oil injector. What you usually do is you get an oil injector with UV dyed oil, fill that full, and then you just put it on the low side and literally inject that into the AC system so it's full of the seven, eight, six ounces of oil that you need because again, there's only two ounces in here and one ounce of refrigerant. So I'm gonna continue to wait for this to pressure up and for it to kick on. I almost forgot to plug back in my dryer. I noticed that that was unconnected because I could not get the uh, compressor pump to kick back on, but hopefully, Things are starting to look up here as we pressure up for this car. And just like that, we have our AC pressures. So you can see on our low side, we're about 40. On our high side, we're about 150. That's close to where we want it on the system. It doesn't actually hold that much refrigerant. This holds like 20 ounces, 1.3 to some pounds. So we put that in, we did an oil charge on this. If you're following this video and you're doing everything I did, you need to either inject UV dyed oil or put an oil charge on this because you have got to get oil back in the system. When we draw a vacuum on the lines, it not only clears out all the moisture and the air in the system, but it also gets rid of all of your PAG oil in the system. Now I highly recommend that you use what your manufacturer recommends for your vehicle or an equivalent that's usually PAG 46 or PAG 100, or you can buy these oil charge cans from Walmart or O'Reilly somewhere. This is the expensive route, but if you don't want to buy the oil injector and wait on that to come from Amazon, then these work great. They work just as well. As you can see, I sprayed my entire engine bay and my windshield with PAG oil as I was bleeding the yellow line to get the air out before refilling it into the system. But we now have nice, nice ice cold AC. Let me turn it down so you can actually hear me. This process works very well if you don't want to pay the big bucks to take your car in to get recharged. I called a couple different places and I was quoted anywhere between two to four hundred dollars. Guys, don't spend that amount. You're probably gonna have to recharge the AC system on another vehicle in the future. So jump on Amazon, buy the hundred dollar kit with the vacuum pump, the manifold gauge set, go to O'Reilly's, get some refrigerant in the little cans. You have to be certified to buy it in a big bottle. Get it in the little cans, get an oil charge or an oil injector if you have more vehicles to do and do it yourself all for less than $200. With the manifold gauge set and the vacuum pump and all of that all in, I'm probably gonna be into this car's AC system like 160, 170 bucks. And uh, I am so happy to have nice ice cold AC back in my Murano. And uh, I'm sure you guys will be as well. Hopefully this video works out for you. I've got to do it on my Camry. I, uh, I've tried to do it on my Camry and I cannot get my compressor to stay running. So I must have like a low pressure switch issue or something, but I do have it charged up because I manually jumped and ran the compressor. So 
I'm gonna put some oil into that and we're gonna get it working as well. So if your compressor is being finicky and it doesn't wanna run, hit the big red button below and stay tuned to the channel because very soon I'm gonna be showing you how to get, and I'm gonna be learning myself how to get a finicky AC compressor that doesn't want to run during this process running. With all of that said, Follow me on the Insta thing linked down below because you're not going to want to miss sneak peeks or behind the scenes content that I put up there. Also, subscribe to the channel because you're not going to want to miss future uploads and content. With all of that said, get out, enjoy your automotive ownership, recharge your AC system, and I'll catch you in the next video.